Welcome to another great episode of the PSA Dude here on WTP-TV Channel 17. Today we're continuing our series with On the Road with the PSA Dude and we've headed to Galveston which is starting Mardi Gras this weekend and we're headed to the 1894 Grand Opera House here in the Strand. So we've got a lot of great things to see inside and a lot of cool things happening in Houston to tell you about. Join us inside. I like the swordfish, you keep in a tank. I like the sea bills, you keep in a bank. I like the purple hose and purple shoes and Peter Jennings on the evening. Uh, excuse me while I talk to my shirt. So here we are, and here is our grand. And here is Maureen Patton, executive director of the grand. Thanks for having us, Maureen. Well, it's a pleasure. We love showing off our, our little girl. <laughs> can, can you give our viewers a little history of the grand? Absolutely. It's, uh, there's a lot of history. We're 109 years old, so obviously I could talk forever. But uh, in, in brief, it was built in 1894 to replace an earlier opera house here in Galveston. This one was to be bigger, uh, more available. The other one was a second story opera house, which is kind of an unusual uh, way to get into a theater. Also a very hard way to load in a show into a theater. And it was smaller. Uh, this one was really an effort to make its mark in Galveston and in the state. As you probably know, Galveston was a major port of entry for immigration, so it was a really large city. And the Grand was, at that time, had the largest stage in the state of Texas and one of the largest in the Southwest. By today's standards, it's not anywhere near that big. Uh, and it seated at that time about 1,600 people. We seat today a little over 1,000. So again, things have changed. You know, seating requirements have changed, building codes have changed. Went through a lot of wonderful performances. It was built as a performing arts theater. Mm -hmm. not as a movie house or uh, a, a vaudeville house or anything like that. And that's why the stage was large. And it presented things, uh, touring companies that toured all over this country, whether it be uh, international tours like Anna Pavlova or a, a national tour that was uh, simply something that started perhaps in New York and traveled across the, across the country by train. Uh, our actual loading dock originally was built so that things could load off of a train. The train tracks ran down the alley and they could load onto the stage oh, wow. from there. I mean, it's just <laughs> fascinating the way things really worked. We had gas and electric lights in here originally. In fact, had gas footlights, which would have been pretty spectacular. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, and then that crazy little storm came along, that 1900 mm -hmm. storm, which just about destroyed the building. And yet within a year, it was back up and in business. And I think that the imperative for this community was to have people come here to band together to get some kind of support from each other, to forget about the storm or to cry together about the storm. It was that, you know, that important a piece of history in this community. Uh, went through a number of years as a movie theater. Mr. Martini purchased the building, and he at one time had almost 40 theaters here in Galveston, movie theaters. I mean, it, it's just phenomenal to mm -hmm. think of that many theaters here in, in one place. And then in 1974, the building was purchased 
uh, and the restoration begun. And as they say, the rest now is our history. And today uh, we do a variety of performances in here from, uh, from again, international stars. We have Sir James Galway coming in this year, who is a, a flautist and a storyteller, a wonderful mm -hmm. Irishman. And we have uh, our local dance schools that perform here. Uh, we have had B.B. King here this year and Paul Anka. We've had Broadway shows like Kiss Me Kate and Fame and Saturday Night Fever. Uh, big band shows like uh, Henry Mancini's music from the movies. Uh, tuna. Everybody mm -hmm. in this area knows about tuna. And our tuna boys make a home here and they come every year. So it's a, it's a wonderful space uh, in which to perform. The, the artists love it. The audiences love it because no seats farther than 70 feet from the stage. They can see everyone up close and personal. Uh, you can see the raise of an eyebrow. You can't always see that in the bigger theaters. Mm -hmm. So we're awfully proud. And it, uh, uh, we do a lot of our, our patronage uh, from the greater Houston area. And how can our viewers find out about the events going on at the Grand? Well, a couple of ways. They can call our box office at 409-765-1894, okay. or they can go onto our website at www.thegrand.com. Pretty simple. Great. Now we're going to explore some more beautiful places around the Grand and bring you some more PSAs on what's going on in Houston and beyond. Thanks for having okay. us, Maureen. It was a pleasure. You have tours every day? Every day. We're open for tours, self-guided tours. This theater is really gorgeous. You have to see it for yourself. We're going to bring you our next set of PSAs from the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. As always, the museum is presenting a series of films. They show on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. And right now, they're in the middle of a series on mental health and the law. The series presents four films chosen for their interpretations of the legal consequences surrounding social political issues and mental illness. Panel discussions follow each screening. And this weekend, the featured film is M by Fritz Lang. Inspired by actual events, this classic suspense thriller portrays a child molester who is murdering little girls. The police department's frantic search has yielded no clues to the killer's identity. As neighbors turn on each other and police raid criminal dens, the underworld's leading members resolve to catch and bring the suspect to justice themselves. It's the first sound film from German director Fritz Lang and will tell the grim tale through expressive shadows using distorted camera angles, claustrophobic sets, and innovative sound design. It's a really great movie. It's a classic. You should get out and see it this weekend at the MFA. Also at the MFA right now at the museum is the exhibit Beyond Ornament, Contemporary Jewelry from the Helen Williams Drutt Collection. Helen Williams Drutt is a pioneer in the field of contemporary craft, having assembled one of the most important collections of contemporary jewelry in the world. The 650-piece Drutt Collection comprises both one-of-a-kind and limited edition works. See selections that date from the 1960s to the 1980s that are defined by characteristics including technical proficiency, attention to detail, and balance between design and craftsmanship. And that exhibit will end on February 29th, so get to the MFA now and see it. For more information on these events and other great things going on at the Museum of Fine Arts, you can visit them online at the address on the screen. I'm sitting two seats from the stage here at the Grand in Galveston in these gorgeous blue seats. And we're going to bring you our next PSA from the Houston Grand Opera. And they're announcing the concert of Arias 2004, which will be held Thursday, February 12th at 7 p.m. in the Cullen Theater of Wortham Center. And it's chaired by Sandy and Lee Godfrey and will honor Diane and John Riley. The concert of Arias is the final round of the 15th annual Eleanor McCollum Competition for Young Singers, which exists to discover talented young singers and hone them for membership in the HGO studio. 
Building on the two-year-old precedent of appointing a well-renowned artist in the field to preside as guest judge, this year's Mistress of Ceremonies and guest judge will be Puerto Rican-American soprano Ana Maria Martinez, who won the competition herself a decade ago. The Concert of Arias is an exciting night for both the audience and the competing singers. HGO receives over 450 applicants from around the world, from young singers interested in competing for the top honors in the Concert of Arias. For more information on this event, you can contact Laura Woods, Associate Director of Special Events, by phone at 713-546-0277, or you can visit the Houston Grand Opera online at houstongrandopera.org. We're backstage and we're here with the guys in IA. And if we were smart, we would be in IA. And this is Jeff, who is a fourth generation stage, backstage hand. Right. What's, what's your special? department back uh, here. I'm the stage manager. Oh, you are the stage here. manager. You are the stage manager and your great grandfather opened the grand? Right. He was the head carpenter the day it opened in uh, January the 3rd, 1895. That is absolutely amazing. And then your father? My grandfather worked here during vaudeville days as the head carpenter when my great grandfather became the stage manager. And ah. then my father worked here during uh, the movie days, so did my grandfather, he ran the, the film projector. Oh, cool. There. And then uh, my father used to just change the borders and things on the, on the, uh, the screens. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 1986, the opening, the grand opening with uh, Steve and Edie, uh, me and my brother and my father, all three worked the show. And now my daughter and my son work here, fifth really? generation. Yeah. And anybody have a desire to, to, move beyond, to move beyond the curtain line? No. Go out in the front? No. We're, we're good back I'm here? I'm having a hard time standing in front of this camera. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a PSA? <laughs> okay, we're going to bring you our next PSA from the Texas Children's Hospital, Alan Samuels Chevrolet, and State Representative Scott Hochberg, who are presenting car seat checkups a very important event occurring on Thursday, February 12th. That's this Thursday. They will um, check your car seat for you. And apparently, four out of five car seats are used incorrectly. Could yours be one of them? You can bring your kids, and they will fit the car seat specifically to your kid. So it's definitely a worthwhile thing to check out. For more information, you can call Susan Hertz at 832 824 2045. For our final PSA, we're going to bring you an announcement from Mecca. On Friday and Saturday, February 13th and 14th, at 7.30 p.m., Mariachi Mecca will host its third annual Viva el Amor. Under the interim direction of Raul Medina, Mariachi Mecca will perform 14 songs ranging from mildly romantic to the gut and heart-wrenching standards for which mariachi music is so well known, with a Stevie Wonder tune thrown in for zest. Attendees are in for a night of love, loss, and laughter during this year's concert. The event happens at Mecca, which is at 1900 Kane Street. For more information, you can visit Mecca's website at www.mecca-houston.org. Now, this show is over. We're sad to say goodbye to the Grand. Have I mentioned what a beautiful place it is? And this means that On the Road with the PSA Dudes over as well. We've had a great month getting out to places like Galveston, the Forbidden Gardens. It's been a lot of fun. We hope that you go out and check these places out for yourself. Remember, if you'd like us to read your announcement or event on the PSA Dude, put me on your mailing list, psadude at houston-mediasource.org, or send us some announcements in the mail, PSA Dude Houston Media Source, 3900 Milam Street, Houston, Texas, 77006. And remember to check us out every day here on WTP-TV, Channel 17. See you next week.